Hello dear students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this session, we will be discussing the topic pair of linear equations in two variables. Before we move on to the next concept, let's have a look at the key concepts that we will be dealing with in this chapter. We will be dealing with general form of linear equations in two variables, then conditions of consistency and two ways in which we can represent linear equations and solve them. Let's begin. General form of linear equations in two variables. What do you mean by a linear equation? An equation with the highest power as 1 is called a linear equation. And when we draw it in a graph, it will look like a line, linear line. That's how, why we call it a linear equation. And in two variables, it, I, don't, I don't think you need a specific explanation for that. So there are only two variables in one such equation. So linear equations in two variables means equations constituting two variables and having a degree one. That's it. Now, generally, we can express a linear equation in many ways, but we, the most commonly used is uh, by taking uh, the, the unknowns as x and y. So, the general equation is ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. For example, 2x plus y minus 6 is equal to 0. 18a minus 3b plus 44 is equal to 0. All you have to do is replace x and y with any other variable and you will get a linear equation in two variables. So the ax plus by plus c, y, c is equal to 0 in that x and y are called the variables means the value can change. a and b are the coefficients and c which doesn't really have any variable is called the constant. Now the number of solutions an equation will have will depend on its degree and the number of variables or the unknowns. So in a linear equation the degree is 1 and there are two unknowns x and y. So 1 into 2, 2. So which means that there are two possible values one for x and one for y. That's what we mean by the solution of linear equation. So x can take one value, y can take one value. And the number of equations we need to solve such an equation are two. Why? Because there are two unknowns, so we need two equations. If there were three unknowns, we might have needed three equations and that's how it works. So we, don't, we, we can't use just one linear equation and solve it, we need two. And that's what we call a system of pair of linear equations in two variables. So the general formula for pair of linear equations in two variables is like this a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 that's one equation and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0 that's a second equation. Now there are certain conditions that an equation has to satisfy to be whether it's consistent or not. What do you mean by consistent? Consistency of an equation means the presence or the possibility of a solution. Inconsistent means the, the chance of uh, occurring, uh, having a solution is nil. So for an equation or for a system of two equations, a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0. In that, we will have to take the values of a1 by a2, b1 by b2 and c1 by c2. Now the first condition is if a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 that means the ratio of the coefficients of x is not equal to the ratio of coefficients of y we can say that in that system of linear equation there is only one solution as in x can take one value y can take one value only one unique solution to be exact such a such a system can be termed as a consistent system of linear equations now the second condition is if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 not equal to c1 by c2 then we can say that the system of linear equations is inconsistent or no solution at all they don't have any value for x or y so if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 not equal to c1 by c2 no solution or inconsistent now the third condition is that 
if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2 that means all the ratios are equal we can say that such a system is consistent and dependent which means by consistent we mean that there is there is solution for the uh, for these equations and by dependent means there are a lot of possible solutions which means x and y can take one pair of value another pair and infinity to be exact so there are three conditions for consistency let's revise it once again for a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 is equal to 0 if a1 by a2 not equal to b1 by b2 the system is consistent or unique solution if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 not equal to c1 by c2 the system is inconsistent or no solution and if a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 equal to c1 by c2 then the system is consistent and dependent as in infinitely many solutions now let's move on to the graphical representation and solution of system of linear equations so we know that the general formula is a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0 and I already said that the graph of a linear equation is linear as in a straight line. So we need at least two points to plot a straight line. We will take three for a safety as a safety measure. So for a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0, we have to tabulate the possible values of x and y. We have to do the same thing for the next equation. So we will get two tables of x and y combinations. Now during exam or while solving problems, there is a tip. Here is a tip that you can use for finding out x and y. First, for the first data, take x is equal to 0 and find y. Now the second data, take y is equal to 0, find x. So we got two pairs of x and y. Now for the third pair, take any fact value for x and y and do accordingly. I hope that's clear. That's for simplicity of equating and time saving. Take x is equal to 0, find y. Take y is equal to 0, find x. Then take any two random values which you like. So we got three, three pairs of x and y for both the equations. Now it's time to plot them in the Cartesian coordinate, in the Cartesian plane. Now you can see the graph illustrating the two lines representing the two equations. Let these be the lines a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0 in the same graph. So it is to identify the graph of the equation. We are writing the equation on top of the line at the end so that it's easy. Now looking upon the graph itself we can say that if the system of those equations is consistent, inconsistent or consistent and dependent. Let's see how. You can see three figures in the screen. In the extreme left figure you can see that the graph or the red and the green lines representing two equations are intersecting at one point which means that if such is the it's if that is the case of a graph we can say that this system of linear equations is consistent or only one solution you can see only at that point is the the these lines are intersecting so there is only one po possible value for x and y which will satisfy both the equations now moving on to the second one on the extreme right of the screen, you can see the two lines are parallel. Will they ever meet? Will parallel lines ever meet? Never. Which means that they don't have any solution. They are inconsistent. That is an inconsistent system of linear equations in two variables. So and coming to the third one or the last one in the bottom, you can see that the two lines are coinciding which means that they have infinite number of solutions or they are consistent and dependent. I hope you understand the concept. So intersecting lines, one solution or unique solution, consistent. Parallel lines, no solution or inconsistent. Coincident line, many solutions, consistent and dependent. Moving on to algebraic methods of solution. We already uh, discussed that 
an equation or a system of equations is represented as a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0. That is the algebraic representation of equations. Now let's see how we can solve them algebraically. The first uh, method is substitution. As the name suggests, we have to do some substitution for one variable and solve the system. Let's look at an example. x plus y is equal to 14 is first equation. x minus y is equal to 4. Let that be second equation. Now, we have to rewrite any one of these equations in the form x is equal to something or y is equal to something. So let's pick equation number 2 that is x minus 4 is equal x minus y is equal to 4 apologies and rewrite it in the form x is equal to 4 plus y or you can write minus y is equal to 4 minus x anyhow anyway we are rewriting it in the form x is equal to 4 plus y which means that now in we have rewritten equation 2 2 so now in equation 1 instead of x we can use 4 plus y. So now read it once now that we have rewritten equation 2 we can substitute that value in equation 1. So there comes substitution. So the equation 1 which was x plus y is equal to 14 will now become 4 plus y plus y is equal to 14 where 4 plus y is x itself from second equation. I hope that's clear. Now the equation will become 4 plus opening the brackets 4 plus 2y is equal to 14 or upon cancellation and cross multiplication or sorry division we will get the value of y as 5 y is equal to 5. Now that we have the value for y we can find x right because we already have formed the equation that x is equal to y plus 4 so just put y as 5 and add 4 you will get x as 9. I hope the method is, uh, is clear to you. Substitution method it is. Moving on to the second method. This is called elimination method. As the name suggests our intention is to eliminate any one variable from both the equations. Now there are certain rules that you can keep in mind while eliminating. The first rule is that the uh, the variable to be eliminated should be totally like to the variable in the other equation. Let's see an, uh, the example and I'll demonstrate it to you. There is a system of two equations namely 2x minus 3y is equal to 4 as equation 1 and x plus y is equal to 5 as equation number 2. Now we have decided or uh, we can uh, eliminate any variable. We are eliminating y here. So, in order to eliminate y, as per the first rule, the y should have co same coefficients in both the equation. But what is the case in the given system? In the first equation, the coefficient of y is 3 and in the second equation, the coefficient of y is 1. So, we have to first make the coefficients same. For that, we are going to multiply equation 2 with 3. Equation 2 into 3 will give you... 3x plus 3y is equal to 15 and equation 2 or equation 1 sorry can be written as it is. Now you may notice that the y or the y part is having plus 3 in one equation and minus 3 in the other equation. So the coefficient or the terms are like. Now one more thing or the second rule that you have to keep in mind while doing elimination method is that if the sign of the variable to be eliminated are same then we have to subtract the equations. I hope my point is clear. If the signs of the variable to be eliminated are same then we have to subtract the equations. Vice versa if the signs of the variable to be eliminated are different we have to add the equation. I hope that's clear. So in this equation now the equation 2 has been changed to 3x plus 3y is equal to 15 and equation 1 is already 
2x minus 3y is equal to 4. We can see 3y and 3y that's done. Now the signs are different. So we can simply add these equations. Adding 3 minus 3y and plus 3y will get cancelled, eliminated and 2x plus 3x will give you 5x. On the right hand side 4 plus 15 will give you 19. Solving for x we will get x is equal to 90 by 5. Now that we have the value for x we can find y by putting the value for x in any of the given equation. So we are putting the value of x, uh, x in equation 2. So we got the, the value for y as 6 by 5. Simple. So the x is 19 by 5 and 5 y is equal to 6 by 5. Let's move on to the third and the final method of algebraic solution. So this is called cross multiplication. Uh, again, we have to begin from the general formula a1x plus b1y plus c1 is equal to 0 and a2x plus b2y plus c2 is equal to 0. So we have to write x, y, 1 like three columns. So we know how x, we know how y and 1 is simply the, uh, the factor or the number multiplied to the constant. I hope that's clear. So x, y, 1 will form the first three columns. Now you have to write the coefficients as shown in the board or in the screen. Sorry. So the b1, b2 on the left side of x, then comes c1, c2, then comes a1, a2, then comes b1, b2. So the second row or the second and third row are beginning with y, sorry, beginning with coefficients of y that is b1 and b2 and ending with the same b1, b2. So we have written x, y, 1, then b1, b2, c1, c2, a1, a2 and b1, b2 again. Now comes the cross multiplication part. We have to cross multiplying the corresponding terms as shown. Now you may see that b1 and b terms and c terms come below x and c terms and a terms are coming below y and a terms and b terms are coming below 1. Now you may form the equation as shown x by b1 c2 cross multiplication b1 c2 minus b2 c1 is equal to y by c1 a2 minus c2 a1 is equal to 1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1. Now the next step is to take x part and equate to the 1 by denominator. So x by b1 c2 minus b2 c1 is equal to 1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1 and solve for x and similarly take the term of y y by c1 a2 minus c2 a1 is equal to 1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1 and solve for y we will get the two equations for x and y like this so x is equal to b1 c2 minus b2 c1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1 and y is equal to c1 a2 minus c2 a1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1. So this is how we find x and y in cross multiplication. All you have to do is either memorize the final equations or study the whole process from the top. You can choose the method you want. So when they have specifically asked to use cross multiplication, you can either use the memorized final equation, write the equation, then apply, put the values of each and everything, or you can start from the beginning. It's your choice. Now we shall begin with the numericals, very short answer type questions carrying one mark each. The first question, if ax plus by is equal to a square minus b square and bx plus ay is equal to 0, find the value of x plus y. This question can be done in many ways. You can either use any of the three methods, algebraic methods and solve for x and y and add x plus y and find. Now we have used direct addition of these equation. Let's see how. We are adding, so written as ax plus by is equal to a square minus b square below ay plus bx is equal to 0. Adding correspondingly, we will get ax plus ay 
plus by plus bx is equal to a square minus b square plus 0. The equation will become a is common in the first two terms. So, you can take it out. That will be a into x plus y. Again, taking b out, that will become plus b into x plus y will be equal to a square minus b square. Now, you may see that x plus y is common in the left hand side. You can take that term outside again. Taking x plus y as common out, what's remaining? a plus b. So, the equation in LHS will become a plus b into x plus y is equal to a square minus b square. Now, you have to find x plus y. So, isolate x plus y there, take a plus b to the other side. a plus b was being multiplied. So, upon transposing, it will become division. So, the equation will be x plus y is equal to a square minus b square by a plus b. A square minus b square is an identity. So, apply the identity, equation will become x plus y is equal to a plus b into a minus b divided by a plus b. a plus b is common, so cancelling the common terms, we have x plus y is equal to a minus b. That's it. Moving on to the second question. For what value of k, the pair of equations 4x minus 3y is equal to 9 and 2x plus ky is equal to 11 has no solution. So, we are supposed to find an unknown, the coefficient of y in the second equation, given that this system has no solution. Now, what is the condition for no solution? a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2, not equal to c1 by c2. That is the uh, the condition for no solution. So, we, we know a1, a2, b1, b2 and c1, c2. Substitute it in the ratios, we will get 4 by 2 is equal to minus 3 by k not equal to 9 by 11. We can we can not we can ignore 9 by 11 because it should not be equal. Now take the first two terms 4 by 2 that is 2 is equal to minus 3 by k on solving we will get k as minus 3 by 2. Moving on to the third equation third question calculate the area bounded by the line x plus y is equal to 10 and both the coordinate axis. So, we are given a, uh, an equation x plus y is equal to 10 and we have to calculate the area bounded by the line. So, x plus y is equal to 10 is a linear equation, its graph will be a line. So, we are supposed to find the area formed by the line and the coordinate axis namely x axis and y axis. So, we know how to plot how to plot the graph of a linear equation. We have to tabulate the possible values for x and y. I have taken x as 0 and I got y as 10. Then I took y as 0, we got x as 10. Now, we have taken two random values 5 and 5 and on plotting that graph, we will get the graph like this. You can show, we can, you can see the line of the graph. X plus Y is equal to 10 going this way. Now, the area bounded between the, the, uh, the line and the axis will be the triangle. And we know that this triangle is having is, uh, is 10 uh, units uh, ahead of the Y axis and it's 10 units away from the x axis. Now, how do you find area of a triangle? Half into base into height. So, half into what is base? 10 units and what is height? 10 units. So, half into 10 into 10 will give you half into 100 that is equal to 50 square units. Moving on to the next question. Find whether the following pair of linear equations is consistent or inconsistent. The equations are 3x plus 2y is equal to 8 and 6x minus 4y is equal to 9. So, we are asked to uh, check the conditions and apply accordingly and decide if the system is consistent or inconsistent. So, we have to take the values a1 by a2 separately, b1 by b2 and c1 by c2 and check if there is any relation between them. So, a1 by a2 will be 3 by 6 that is equal to 1 by 2 
b1 by b2 is equal to 2 by negative 4 that is equal to 1 by 2. So it is a first condition itself a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 that is a1 by a2 1 by 2 b1 by b2 is minus 1 by 2 they are not equal. So a1 by a2 not equal to b1 by b2 is the condition uh, satisfying the uh, satisfying when the equations have unique solution or one single solution. Therefore, we can say that the given pair of equations is consistent. Moving on to the next question. Solve by elimination. 3x is equal to y plus 5. 5x minus y is equal to 11. So, when we observe the equations, one equation, both the equations have to be made into a similar form. So, 3x is in the form, uh, sorry, the first equation is in the form 3x is equal to y plus 5. x term is on one side and the y term and the constant term is on the other side. Whereas in the next equation, 5x minus y is equal to 11. Both x and y terms are in one side and 11 is on the other. So we have to make them into one similar term. So the first equation can be rewritten as 3x minus 5 is equal to 5. That and 5x minus y is equal to 11. Now you can use elimination method. So we are, we are supposed to use elimination method. Uh, we will eliminate uh, y, y term in both the equations. And we can see that both y terms are having the same sign. So when same sign comes, we have to do subtraction. So subtracting uh, the equations, we will get 3x minus 5x. That will be minus 2x and minus y and plus y will give you uh, 0 and 5 minus 11 will be minus 6. So solving that we will get x is equal to 3. Now solving uh, now that we have x we can find y and we will get the value of y as 4. Moving on to the next type of uh, questions short answer type questions carrying two marks each. Solve for x and y that's the first question and the equations are 27x plus 31y is equal to 85 31x plus 27y is equal to 89 now you can observe that in both the equations the coefficients are mixed for example for instance 27x so uh, in the first equation the coefficient of x is 27 and in the second uh, equation coefficient of y is 27. Similar is the case for 31. So when this type of question comes we can't directly do any method we can do but it's way more complex so we shall make it simpler first then proceed to the solutions. So before that we have to form the equation the method is to add the equations first get the resultant equation and subtract the equations and get the resultant equation. Let's see how. First of all, we are adding the two equations. So 27x plus 31x will give us 58x. Similarly, 31x, 31y plus 27y will give you 58y. That is equal to 85 plus 89 that is 174 so the equation after adding uh, we get 58 plus 58 x plus 58 y is equal to 174 now the whole equation has 58 as a common factor we can cancel that on either side so we will get x plus y is equal to 3 so that is our equation 1 now the second equation is to be found by subtracting the given equations. So that will be 27x plus 31y is equal to 85 minus 31x plus 27y is equal to 89. On subtracting we will get minus 4x plus 4y is equal to minus 4. We can see 4 is common all of them, all of them. so the equation can be rewritten as x minus y is equal to 1 and that is equation number 2. Now we may solve it and we have 
we have used elimination to solve it again we are eliminating y and y the sign of y is plus and minus different so we can simply add these equations we will get 2x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 2 now putting the value of x we can find the value of y and that is 1 so x is 2 y is 1 moving on to the next question solve the pair of linear equations 49x plus 51y is equal to 499 and 51x plus 49y is equal to 501 this is similar to the previous question that we did just now so the coefficient of x of the first equation and that of y for the second equation are same 49 same is the case for 51 51 is coefficient of y in the first equation and that of x in the second equation so what do we do we have to add and subtract these two equations to get our equations to solve to the main equations that we will use to solve so adding the two equations we will get 100x plus 100y is equal to 1000 or cancelling 100 or from either side we will get x plus y is equal to 10. Subtracting the two equations we will get minus 2x plus 2y is equal to minus 2 or minus x plus y is equal to minus 1. So those are our equations 1 and 2. Now we are again solving using elimination. You can try substitution or cross multiplication. So the equation will be 2y uh, on adding the equation will be 2y is equal to 9 or y is equal to 9 by 2. Similarly, by putting the value of uh, y as 9 by 2 in any given equation, we can find the value of x and it is found to be 11 by 2. So x is equal to 11 by 2 and y is equal to 9 by 2 are the solutions of our equation. Next question, find the two numbers whose sum is 75 and the difference is 50. This is a typical word problem and application level problem. So in this one, in any word problem, whatever it is that we have to find are taken as x and y. So here the question is to find two numbers. So we have to give the assumption as let two numbers be x and y. Pause it there. Now apply the condition. What is the condition? Two numbers. Find the two numbers whose sum is 75. So we have taken the numbers as x and y. Their sum is 75 means x plus y is equal to 75 and their difference is 15. We can assume that x is greater than y. With that we can form the second equation as x minus y is equal to 15. So we got x plus y 75 x minus y 15 you can solve both and we will get 2x is equal to 90 or x is equal to 90 by 2 that is 45 now putting the value of the x in any of the equations we will get the value of y as 30 so the two numbers you have to write the conclusion every time therefore the two numbers are 45 and 30. You can verify it by putting their values in any one of the equations. For example, we know that we are given that x plus y is 75. So we can put 45 plus 30 and you will get 75. That's correct. That's, that's how you check the answer. Moving on to the next question. Find the value of alpha and beta for which the following pair of linear equations has infinite number of solutions we are supposed to find two values alpha and beta uh, from a two sit system of linear equations such uh, so that the, that system has infinite number of solutions so the equations are 2x plus 3y is equal to 7 alpha x plus alpha plus beta y is equal to 28 now what is the condition for infinite number of solutions a1 by A2 equal to B1 by B2 equal to C1 by C2 is a condition. So we know that A1 and A2 are 2 and alpha, B1 and B2 are 3 and alpha plus beta, C1 and C2 are 7 and 28. Taking their ratios, we will get 
2 by alpha is equal to 3 by alpha plus beta is equal to 7 by 8 cancelling 7 we will get 1 by 4 now we can equate 2 by alpha to 1 by 4 we will get alpha as 8 and equating 3 by alpha plus beta is equal to 1 by 4 and putting the value of alpha in the equation we will get beta as 12 to, uh, sorry 12 minus 8 that is 4 therefore alpha is 8 and beta is equal to 4 i hope you understood the steps moving on to the th next question solve the following by cross multiplication the equations are x plus 2y is equal to 2 x minus 3y is equal to 7 we know that the first uh, type of solution or type of method that we come to our mind when we see an equation uh, is elimination method that's by default because that's the most simplest one but, but they had specifically asked for cross multiplication so we have to stick on to that so how does it begin x y 1 then write down from b1 b2 c1 c2 a1 a2 and b1 b2 i hope you remember the the picture the diagram so we have written the numerical values for b1 b2 c1 c2 a1 a2 and b1 b2 again then then cross multiplying and forming the equation we will get the equation as x by minus 14 minus 6 is equal to y by minus 2 plus 7 is equal to 1 by minus 3 minus 2 taking the x by the denominator is equal to 1 by the denominator we can solve for x and x value will be 4 similar similarly taking y by denominator is equal to 1 by denominator we can solve the value of y and we will get y is equal to negative 1 next question the sum of digits of a two digit number is 8 and the difference between the number and the number obtained or the number formed by reversing the digits is 18 find the number now this is a little bit high level let's see we are supposed to find the number and the number is a two digit number so there will be two digits so i know the first assumption that you might be thinking will be let the number be x y as in let digits be x and y so the number will be x y now take the take the number 81 all right how do you say let the digits be 8 and 1 and it will be the number will be 81 when number when in numbers we can say it but when in x and y we can't say x y because x y simply means multiplication so how do we split the number 81 based on uh, the place value 81 in 80, 81 1 is in 1's place and 8 is in 10's place so when we split it we can write 8 tens plus 1 ones i hope you got my point again if we take some other number say 43 we can split it as 4, four tens plus 3 ones the same way uh, a two digit number with digits x and y we can assume the original number as 10 y plus x like we split 43 as 40 plus 3 82 as 80 plus 2 we can split the number x and y as 10 y plus x or 1 x plus 10 y based on place value that's the original number now the number is reversed which means that if it was 82 it's now 28 so we can write the reverse number with if the original number is 10y plus x then the reversed number will be 10x plus y so we have completed our assumptions part now according to the question the sum of the digits is 8 so digits are x and y alone uh, in the number 49 the digits are 4 and 9 so sum of the digits is uh, 8 so we can write x plus y is equal to 8 that be our first equation now moving on to uh, on to form the second equation we have to take the second statement the difference between the number and that formed by reversing the digits is 18 so the original number minus reversed number is 18 what is original number 10 
y plus x and the reverse number is 10x plus y. So 10y plus x minus 10x plus y is equal to 18. Solving that a little bit, we will get 9y minus 9x is equal to 18 or y minus x is equal to 2. There you go, we got two equations. The first one will be x plus y is equal to 8 and the second one y minus x is equal to 2. You can add or subtract them or you can use any method cross multiplication, substitution or elimination and we will get the value of y as 5 and x as 3. So we are not done yet. We are talking about a two digit number here. The original number is 10y plus x. So y is 5. So 5 into 10 plus x is 3. 5 into 10 plus 3 is our number. 5 tens are 50 plus 3 is 53. So 53 is our required number. And now you can check that the digits, the sum of digits of 53 is 5 plus 3 is 8. We got it, right? That's right. Moving on to the next type of questions, long answer type questions carrying three marks each, usually asked in the third section. The taxi charges in a city comprises of fixed prices together with the charge of distance covered. For a journey of 12 km, the charge paid is Rs. 89 and for a journey of 20 km, the charge paid is Rs. 145, 145. What will a person have to pay for travelling a distance of 30 km? So we have to find the charge for 30 km and the condition is that we are not just paying for the distance covered, we are also paying a fixed charge. That's how the question begins. A taxi charge comprises of fixed charges together with charge for the distance. So let fixed charge be rupees x and the charge per kilometer be rupees y. Those are the assumptions. Now for 20, sorry, 12 kilometer, we are paying 89. So the equation will be x, that is a fixed charge, plus 12 kilometer into y is equal to 89. That will be equation 1 and x plus 20 kilometers. So x plus 20y is rupees 145. So that is equal to 145. That is equation number 2. Solving these, we will get y is equal to 7 and x as 5. So we can say that the fixed charge is rupees 5 and the uh, charge per kilometer is 7. Now the question is that we have to find the fare for 30 kilometer distance. How do you find that? x plus 30y. Fixed charge plus 30 kilometer into charge per kilometer. x is 5 y is 7 so we will get the equation as 2 sorry x plus 30y is equal to 5 plus 30 into 7 that would be 205 rupees. Next question a boat takes 4 hours to go 44 kilometer downstream and it can go 20 kilometer upstream in the same time. Find the speed of the stream and that of the boat in still water. Now this is a very important question and people get confused often but it's easy once you understand the concept. So we have to give the assumption what are we supposed to find in the question? Find the speed of stream and speed of boat. So we will assume the speed of boat to be x kilometer per hour and speed of stream y kilometer per hour. Units are important in word problems. Now we had given, we had been given two cases, downstream and upstream. We know that in a, in a flowing water body, there will be some water current. So that's what we mean by speed of stream. Now in case of downstream, both the boat and the water current will be in the same direction. So this is X and this is Y, they both will, tra will be traveling in the same direction. And in, in case of same direction, the speeds will get added up. 
but in case of upstream the speeds will be the direction of traveling will be if the current is in this direction the boat will be opposite to that upstream opposite to, to that so if this is x this will be y and when we take the direction of the speeds that will be subtraction the net speed will be uh, the speed of boat minus the speed of stream that's how we have written the second set of assumptions speed of boat in downstream will be x plus y speed of boat in upstream will be x minus y kilometer per hour i hope you got the concept the idea of that now you can we have to use uh, the time distance and speed equation why because it's been specified that it takes 4 hours to go 44 kilometer upstream so there is time there is distance 44 kilometer distance and upstream we have got x plus y same case is applicable for same condition is applicable for the second case 20 kilometer downstream so downstream speed we have given the assumption and it takes the same time four hours with that we have formed the equations as uh, 4 is equal to 44 by x plus y and 20 by x minus y is equal to 4. We can, can uh, transpose each other and cancel the common terms. We will get the equations as 11 is equal to x plus y and 5 is equal to x minus y. Solving these two equations, we can find the value of y as 3 and the value of x as 8. So, x is 8 means speed of boat. You have to write the conclusion in case of word problems. So, therefore, speed of the boat is 8 km per hour and speed of the stream is 3 km per hour. That's how we have to conclude these type of questions. Here comes next question. A man travels 300 km partly by train and partly by car. He takes 4 hours if he travels 60 km by train and the rest by car. If he travels 100 km by train and the remaining by car, he takes 10 minutes longer. Find the speeds of the train and the car separately. So the question is to find speeds of the train and the car. So we have to give the assumptions. Let speed of train be x kilometer per hour and speed of car be y kilometer per hour. Now let's break the question into few parts, you know, into parts. So the first sentence states that a man is traveling 300 kilometer partly by train and by car. So let this be 300. For in that, uh, uh, some distance is being traveled by train and the remaining is done by car. And in the first case, he takes 4 hours if he travels 60 km by train and the remaining by car. So, for the total journey, he is taking 4 hours if he is traveling 60 using train and the what is the remaining? Total minus 60, that by car. So, let's see how the equation goes. So, there is time, speed and distance involved. So, we have to use time is equal to distance by speed because the total time has been given for the entire journey. So, t is equal to, so time is 4, 4 is equal to distance by speed. What is the distance covered by train? 60 km. And what is the speed of train? x. So, 60 by x for the total journey. So, we have to add the car's time as well. So, 60 by x, what is the remaining distance? 300 minus 60 that is 240. So, 60 by x plus 240 by y is equal to 4 hours. That be the first equation. Now, for the second equation, if uh, he travels 100 km by train and the remaining by car, he takes 10 minutes longer, which means that out of the 300, he's traveling 100 km by train. That means 100 by x plus what is the total 300 minus 100 is 200 that is the remaining distance 
So 100 by x plus 200 by y, he takes 10 minutes longer, which means that initially he took 4 hours, now he needs 10 minutes more to complete the journey. So that will be 4 plus 10 minutes. We have to convert both into same unit. So in this uh, screen, you can see that we had converted both into hours. So 4 hours will remain as it is. Now 10 minutes is uh, 10 by 60 hour. 10 by 60 or 1 by 6. So 4 plus 1 by 6 will give us 25 by 6. So the second equation is 100 by x plus 200 by y is equal to 25 by 6. Now you may notice that x and y are in the denominators. We are not used to do problems with x and y in the denominators. So in such type of questions, we have to assume x 1 by x or 1 by the denominator as another value. So let 1 by x is equal to a and 1 by y is equal to b. Then the equations will become 60a plus 240b is equal to 4 and 100a plus 200b is equal to 25 by 6. Then you may solve it as usual and you can find the values of a and b then give it back to x and y. I hope you understood. This type of equations are called equations reducible to normal form, general formula. So whenever there is uh, some mismatch or something unusual happening with x and y, we have to assume those to another variable, then, then do linear equations, solution methods and find those variables, then put it back to find x and y. Little, it's a, it takes a little longer, but it's co it's convenient, right? Rather than making it more complex. Now, on upon doing this problem, we will get the value of x as 60 and y as 80. So, x is speed of the train. Therefore, speed of train. The conclusion is 60 km per hour, and speed of the car is 80 km per hour. Now comes the next question solve the following pair of linear equations graphically they had specified graphically so we know how to draw a graph we have to tabulate three values of x and y for each equations you may uh, take a look at the values here for x plus 3y is equal to 6 the values are 0 2 6 0 and minus 3 3 now for the next equation 2x minus 3y is equal to 12 the values for x and y are 0, minus 4, 6, 0 and 9, 2. So we had plot the graph and they have asked us to find, also find the area of triangle formed by the lines representing the given equations with y axis. So we are not just asked to plot the graph, we have to find area of the triangle formed by the lines representing the given equations with y-axis. So this is how the equation, the graph would look like. And we can see that a triangle is formed between the three points uh, more close to or touching the y-axis at two points. The points are mainly 0, 2, 0, minus 4 and 6, 0. That is a triangle form. We are supposed to find the area of that triangle. So how do you find area of a triangle? half into base into height. Now let's see what is the base length of this triangle. <laughs> let's take the base uh, along y-axis. So the, the, the triangle, the vertices, vertices of this triangle across y-axis is, uh, is situated 2 units above the origin and 4 units below the origin when we look at the y-axis. I'll repeat, for this particular triangle, to find the base, we can see that the two points 0, 2 and 0, minus 4, the gap between them is two points above the origin and four points below the origin. So two divisions, sorry, two divisions below above the origin, four divisions below the origin. So what is the total number of divisions? 2 plus 4 is 6. 
so base is 6 now what is the gap between the origin and the x coordinate or the x part the other point is 6 0 what is the gap between the origin and the 6 0 that is 6 divisions again so the height of the triangle is 6 as well as its uh, sorry the base of the triangle is 6 as well as its height is also 6 so the area will be half into 6 into 6 6 6 are 36 36 by 2 will give you 18 square units and we have to find the point of intersection of lines as in this question is to solve these equations so the point of intersection of these lines is the solution of the equation so x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 0 for the given equations now the next question draw the graphs for the following equations 2x minus y is equal to 1 x plus 2y is equal to 13 find the solution of the equations from the graph and shade the triangular region formed by the lines and the y-axis so let's do the representation part at first we will plot the graph first 2x minus y is equal to 1 write that down tabulate the values x plus 2y is equal to 13 write them down and tabulate the values now the graph will look like this and always always after drawing the lines write the corresponding equations above or below the line so that we can easily identify it the solution for the, this system of equations can be found by mere observation you can observe the intersecting points or the points of intersection of the two lines that is 3 5 so x is equal to 3 y is equal to 5 is a solution for this equation for this system of equations now the second part of the question is to shade the triangular region so you can see the shading of the triangular region so during exam you have to literally shade the triangular region now moving on to the last section very long answer type questions of four or five marks depending on the curriculum let's move on to the first question amit bought two pencils and three chocolates for rupees 11 and sumit bought one pencil and two chocolates for rupees 7 represent this situation in the form of a pair of linear equations find the price of one pencil and that of one chocolate graphically so our uh, word problem is given and we have to solve it graphically so before first things first we have to start giving the assumption find the price of one pencil and that of one chocolate that's what we have to find so let price of one pencil be rupees x and price of one chocolate be rupees y now for two pencils and three chocolates it's 11 so the equation will be 2x plus 3y equal to 11 and for one pencil and two chocolates it's 7 so x plus or 1x plus 2y is equal to 7 now you may tabulate the three values for x and y and plot the graph we can see that the graphs are meeting at point 1 3 the coordinates are 1 3 x is equal to 1 y is equal to 3 so the price of one pencil is rupees 1 and price of one chocolate is rupees 3 that's how we conclude next question 7x minus 5y minus 4 is equal to 0 is given write another linear equations so that the lines represented by the pair are there are three parts for this question intersecting coincident parallel so one question one equation had been given we have to write another equation so that they satisfy these three conditions separately so let's take the first case intersecting lines when do two lines intersect when they have one solution or unique solution now what is the condition for unique solution a1 by a2 not equal to b1 by b2 so we have to take 7 by some value that value can be anything that should not be equal to uh, negative 5 by the other value so here we have given 7x plus 3y plus 2 is equal to 0 so when we take the ratio 
7 by 7 that is 1 uh, and the other one will be minus 5 by 3 that is minus 5 by 3. 1 is not equal to minus 5 by 3 right. So that is satisfying the condition. This type in this type of question you can totally use your imagination you can put any numbers as you wish. These are just examples on how to do. Now question number 2 or part number 2 we have to find another uh, equation so that the pair are coincident. Now what is the condition for coincident lines? Infinite many solutions. So a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2. So all the ratios should be equal and you can see this example or the answer written here is 14x minus 10y minus 8 is equal to 0. When we take the ratio that would be 7 by 14 that is 1 by 2 minus 5 by minus 10 1 by 2 and minus 4 by minus 8 is again 1 by 2 so it satisfies the condition third question is to parallel the lines should be parallel no solution what is the condition for no solution a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 not equal to c1 by c2 so we have written 7x minus 5y plus 3 is equal to 0. We can check it. 7 by 7, 1. Minus 5 by minus 5, 1 again. So, a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2. And the other one will be minus 4 by 3. That is not equal to c1 by c2. It's easy. This question is very easy to do. Now, the next question. A part of monthly hostel charge is fixed and the remaining depends on the number of days one has taken food in the mess. When Swati takes food for 20 days, she has to pay rupees 3000 as hostel charges, whereas Manasi, who had taken food for 25 days, pays rupees 3500 as hostel charges. Find the fixed charge and the cost of food per day. So, to begin with, the assumptions. So, let the fixed hostel charge be x and the cost of food per day be y. Now, we'll take Swati's case. She pays rupees 3000 for 20 days. She stayed for 20 days. So, she paid for 20 days uh, food charge. So, that will be 20 y because we have taken food charge per day as y 20 y and that's not just it we have to add the fixed charge so x is a fixed charge x plus 20 y will give you 3000 now for swati's case sorry for mansi's case the fixed charge is 20 x and for 25 days the food per day is y and for 25 days it would be 25 y so, for Mansi, it is x plus 25y is equal to 3500. We have got two equations. You know how to solve them now. Use algebraic methods, no graphical methods needed. You can get or we will get the value for x as rupees 1000 and y as rupees 100. Therefore, the conclusion, the fixed charges is rupees 1000 and charge per day is rupees 100. Moving on to the next question, solve for x and y. 5 by x minus y plus 1 by y minus 2 is equal to 2 and 6 by x minus 1 minus 3 by y minus 2 is equal to 1. Now this is the type of question where x and y to come in certain equations in the denominator. So we are not used to that. So we have to give assumptions for 1 by x and sorry 1 by x minus 1 and 1 by y minus 2 to some other variables. I hope my point is clear. We are only familiar or we only have to solve equations with x and y in its pure form as in one x term one y term and a constant but in this question there is x minus 1 that 2 in the denominator y minus 2 in the denominator so we have to give assumptions further for 1 by x minus 1 as a and 1 by y minus 2 as b you can take any other variables now the equation will be reduced to 5a plus b is equal to 2 
and 6a minus 3b is equal to 1. Now we know how to solve. We are using elimination again. So 15a plus 3b is equal to 6. Why did we do that? To make the coefficient of b the same. So we had multiplied one equation with 3. So that will be 15a plus 3b is equal to 6 and the other will be 6a minus 3b is equal to 1. Now adding these two because the sign of 3b are different. So all you have to do is addition. Remember? So adding these two equations we will get 21a is equal to 7 and a is equal to 1 by 3. Let it be there find b we will get the value of b as 1 by 3 and we don't want a and b we want x and y so put we we have assumed a as 1 by x minus 1 so 1 by 3 is equal to 1 by x minus 1 and 1 by 3 is equal to 1 by y minus 2 and you can find the values of x and y as 4 and 5 thank you